Once we have fetched an instruction from memory, we need to use the bits in that instruction to tell the rest of the hardware what to do, and that's the execute portion of the CPU. That's going to be far, by far the more complicated and interesting part of the design of this machine. Uh, we can start with a single instruction and build out the hardware we need to execute that instruction, and then we can start to add more functionality as we go. This is our incremental design process. Most of what we want to do is math. So let's take an example. We want to add uh, and put the result in some register D, uh, some value that's in register S, and some value that's in register T. This is a complete MIPS instruction, and it corresponds to 32 bits, uh, and we'll talk about what all those 32 bits are once we actually start implementing these things. But for now, we can be a little bit abstract. This is just an idea in uh, a human head. We want to add into register D, register S plus register T. So we need something to add, and we need a bunch of registers. So we have something that can add. That's our ALU. You can go back to those videos and see how to build the ALU out. We also need registers that are going to hold that information. And this gives us an, a hint that we're going to need maybe a few registers, or maybe a lot of registers. In fact, what we need, if we look at the uh, specification for MIPS, and again, there's an awful lot of details in the MIPS specification. If we look at the specification for MIPS, the registers that we're going to use uh, are down here. There's actually 32 of them, 32 registers all together. And then we need to figure out some way to select one of those registers and present it to the ALU. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build what we call a register file, which is a collection of registers and some hardware at the input to select them and some hardware at the output to route back to them. So this is a collection of registers. Each of these registers can load or store, and that's all they do. These are not shift registers, although there is some shifting that can be done later on. Uh, these are not counters. Uh, the ALU is going to do all the counting and adding. All they do is load and store. They can be very simple, just D flip-flops. Uh, but what we need is some hardware that can choose which register we're interested in. Okay, So the instruction that we fetch from instruction memory is going to contain codes that are going to specify which, which registers we're interested in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have um, decoders, multiplexers, and demultiplexers that are going to select which register is activated, and then that result is going to be presented to the ALU. So this is the design for the general purpose register file. And again, this is true for any register file. So I think this is wrong. It said demultiplexers. should be multiplexers and then decoders. So what we do is we have a list of registers, and for our MIPS machine there will be 15 of them, or, sorry, 32 of them, uh, and then we're going to have a big multiplexer, actually two multiplexers, we'll talk about in a second, and a decoder here. So the reason we're doing it all like this is that first we want to be able to select uh, or choose uh, registers that are going to be presented to the input of the ALU, and we have to choose two of them, two sources, one destination. So we have two multiplexers, each of which is going to select some value, and these are actually banks of multiplexers that are wide enough uh, to, to pass through all of, the, um, all of the values that are in these registers. And each multiplexer then is going to use, a, uh, use the information from the instruction to select one of the registers that are in the file. And then that register is going to be routed to one of the outputs to the register file. We're going to have another register that's going to, or another multiplexer choosing another register. Those are going to be the two registers that are presented as input, or the value that's in those registers, I should say, will be presented to the ALU. The result from the ALU is going to then come back and be presented back to uh, the register file. We're going to use a decoder to choose which of the registers to write to, and that data is going to be com coming in and presented to all of the registers, um, and then the decoder says, register 6. You store that information. Everybody else ignore it. So we've got multiplexers in one end that choose which registers we're going to uh, use as inputs to the ALU, and we have a decoder that chooses where to put the result. Now it's important to recognize here that we've actually now got two different kinds of information here. What we have is a um, we have <laughs> we've got the sort of the address of the register or the selection of the register, which register we're interested in, right? Maybe we want register six 
are six of these registers were interested in register six, pardon me. <clears throat> and then we've also got what's stored in register six. So we have the contents of register six, and we're going to specify it in this way. We're going to put these uh, square brackets around the name of a register to indicate the contents of the name of that register. So if we want register six, then for example, we would put the number six here. This multiplexer would select the sixth input and route that through here, and we would get the contents of register six out there. Okay. This is the whole process for this register file, is we're going to be selecting information, we're going to be routing it from the, uh, from the selection address, which register we're interested in, and then the data that's in that register is going to be presented out of the register file. So really, it's just a, uh, a little bit complicated way of thinking of just a whole bunch of registers that we want to be able to pick from. I want this one and this one, and then I want to put the result back in this one, and this is how we do it. We are building a machine that has three operands per instruction, and so we need two outputs from the register file and two selection addresses up into the register file, and then we need one place to put the register, put the result back in. So here's another example. If we wanted to add register three and four and store the result in register six, then we provide a binary address of three and a binary address of four to the register file, and then we get from the register file the contents of register 3 and register 4. And then maybe we want to store the result in register 6. Then we would select this on the uh, data input for the, multi for the demultiplexer, this should be decoder, uh, to present the result from that operation back to one of the registers uh, in the register file to be stored, and then maybe used again later. So. If we want to add the hardware for this, what we do is we have already the program counter and the instruction memory, and we're going to add some additional hardware, and that hardware looks like this. All of a sudden. <laughs> Way too much, right? But if you think about what this is, oops, uh, let's walk through this and see what we're doing. So we've got the program counter and the instruction memory, and what we want to do is we want to add an ALU, which can do things like adding and subtracting. And we want to add a register file which stores the information that we're going to be presenting to the ALU. We're going to have values from the register file presented to the input of the ALU. And the result from the ALU is going to get put back into the register file. Then we need to specify which values from the register file are presented and where the result goes. And all of those informations are actually in the instruction itself. So the instruction can tell us which registers we want to select to present to the ALU, and which register we want to put, which register we want to use as the result. And so that all looks like this. Uh, so we're going to walk through this. Don't worry. So first of all, we have the register file and the value of the registers we're interested in is presented to the ALU and the result from the ALU is presented back to the register file. Okay, We have control logic in the form of values that's in the instruction that we loaded from the instruction memory that are going to contain the information about which register we're interested in and which register we want to use to store the result. So the instruction is going to specify, and we'll see how that specification happens later, but the instruction is going to specify the two source registers, which are then looked up via those um, multiplexers that are in the register file to select the contents of each of those, and they're presented to the ALU. The instruction, by the way, also tells the ALU what to do. The instruction will say, we're going to add. So this is the opcode, which might be add. And these are the operands, which are what things we're adding. So we're going to add register 6 and register 7 and put the result in register 8. So the register file looks up register 6 and register 7, presents those values to the ALU. The ALU then adds them because the instruction told the ALU to add. And the result gets put back into the register file. So this is an awful lot all at once, and I want you to take a minute to think about and look at this figure 
because we're going to be adding a lot to this figure as we go. The complete specification of the CPU is quite complicated, but at each stage, we need to fully understand what's being done. So this machine now, by itself, can do most ALU operations with most information. It can load information from any register, and it can add and subtract and exclusive or and or and not and whatever, do any function that's in the ALU and put the result back into the register file. It can't make any decisions. It can't load and store information into the register file. So the question has to be asked, where does this information in the register file come from? We don't know that. Where does the instructions come from? We don't know that. But we do know how the register file works and how the ALU works, how instruction memory works, and how the program counter works. So this is a pretty good start. 